Hello, welcome to the ninth part of the AWS C Sharp tutorial. In this video, we're gonna learn how to use Secrets Manager to store our database credentials in a secure way. So let me tell you first something about the Secrets Manager. It's an AWS service that provides the functionality of storing sensitive data like credentials, passwords, API keys, and so on. It is possible to fetch the credentials using AWS client in C Sharp code, so you will be able to access them easily. There is also a possibility to create a Lambda which will change your credentials after a given period, so let's say every single month. That's a very secure practice, but there is one important thing. Secrets Manager is only free for the first 30 days, so after you create your first key, you wouldn't need to pay for the first 30 days. Then the cost is 30 cents for one secret per month. So please be aware of that and make sure that you delete all unused secrets. So after this short introduction, let's get started with coding. We can navigate directly to the CloudFormation file of our database project. In this file, we're gonna store the resources for the Secrets Manager, because in our case, it will be strictly connected with the database. So we can start with the secret resource. I'll name it database instance secret. It is of type AWS Secret Manager Secret. Inside the properties section, we can add a description saying that this is the secret for my RDS instance. And the most important thing here is the generate secret string section. In this section, we're gonna describe how we want the secret to look like, what will be the attributes while creating it. First of all is the secret string template. Why do we need it? It's because Secrets Manager by default does not store the secrets in JSON format. We'll need it because we're gonna use the AWS client to get the credentials with AWS API call. So it should be a correctly structured JSON in which we can specify the username. I'll set it to admin. Make sure that your structure here is correct according to the JSON format. Next, we have the generate string key. So it is the key for the generated string, so our password. Yeah, we would like to have the username and password as keys of our JSON object. Then we can set the password length. I will set it to 16 signs to make sure that it is really secure. The last thing that we would like to specify here is the exclude character section. These signs can make some problems inside the text while parsing the connection string in C Sharp, so we just don't want to have them in our password. You can copy the value from me to prevent having all of the signs that are meaningful in C Sharp string compilation. And that's everything what we need in this section. Now, to make the use of the secret that we created, we can modify the database master username and master user password. We no longer want to store here the hardcoded string as our password, which can be seen in our Git repository. So, in order to get the credentials for our secrets manager, we'll need to use the join cloud formation function. This function concatenates elements of an array of strings with a given separator. The separator is the first element of this array. We would like to have it empty to concat the elements without any separation. So we can set it as an empty string. And then, as the second argument, we are passing the array of elements to join. The first part will be a string, starting with two parentheses, and resolve, then the colon, and then secrets manager word. It needs to be like that to get the secret from the secrets manager service. Then, 
as the second element of this array, we can specify the reference to our newly created database instance secret. As the third element, we'll need to specify to which element of our secret we are pointing. In our case, it is either username or password. And that's it, just close the parentheses inside our string and on outside in the function. The same can be copy-pasted to the password with the change from username word to password. And that's everything. During the deployment, the join function will compile these parameters and create a function that will refer to our secret stores in the secret manager. But there is one tricky thing. As our secret will be used in the RDS, we will need to get it there. But our RDS instance is inside a VPC and the secret manager can be accessed through an endpoint call. But we don't want to provide the access to the internet inside our VPC. It will require a lot of configuration and it is also not a secure practice. So in order to get the credentials from the secrets manager to use them in the database, we'll need to add a VPC endpoint. I will name it secrets manager VPC endpoint. It is of type AWS EC2 VPC endpoint. Inside the properties, we have to specify the service name to which the VPC endpoint will be connected. We need to use the fn sub function because we want to use a variable provided by AWS. Overall, the fn sub function allows us to use variables inside strings and resolve their values. Okay, so the service name for secrets manager is com that Amazon AWS that and here the variable after a dollar sign pointing to AWS region that we are using that secrets manager. And that's it. Next, we need to reference the VPC ID. Just simply use the ref function with the VPC as a parameter. Here we have the subnet IDs. So the same situation, just inside an array, put a reference to subnet A and subnet B. Security group IDs. Besides that, we have only one security group, we need to put it inside an array. It is because it is saying security group IDs. Next, we need to specify the VPC endpoint type. It is either interface or gateway, but gateway is only being used when creating the VPC endpoint for S3 or DynamoDB. So we're gonna choose the interface type since we will use secrets manager. Now what is missing in order to have our application working is to add public IPs to our subnets. Since we would like to have our subnets public, we need to do that. In order to achieve it, we can add a property to every subnet, the map public IP on launch and set it to true. I will do it for both subnet A and subnet B. All right, as we have the whole CloudFormation template configured, now it's time to use the Secrets Manager in the code. I will create a new project to have inside of it the configuration of services that are being used by our app. I will name it Inventory Manager Services. Okay, inside of it, let me create a class Secrets Manager Service. Here we'll create the client for Secrets Manager to get the stored credentials. So it will be done inside get secret async method. Let's for now make it of type void. First, we need to get the secret name. Let's go to the Secrets Manager service in the AWS and select the secret that we have just created. Here you will find the secret's name. Let's just copy it. I will create a variable secret name. Next, we need the secrets manager client to perform the API call 
To get the secret, I will instantiate the Amazon Secrets Manager client class, which is inside the AWS SDK Secrets Manager. It takes the region as a parameter. In my case, it is EU Central 1. To get the credentials, we will need to call the getSecretValueAsync method on the client. It is asynchronous, so also our method must be async. It takes the getSecretValue request as a parameter, so let's first create it. It's very easy since we will only need to pass the secret ID, which is our secret name. Alright, let's assign the response of the endpoint to a variable. And in case if we fail to get the secret value, we can throw an exception to not continue the code execution. So if everything went successful, we'll need to somehow map the response to a C-sharp object. I will add a new folder in this project called models and inside of it create a DB user model. It will contain two properties, the username and password. Inside the Secrets Manager service, we can use JSON convert class with deserialize object method to parse the response to the DB user model. It will take the response.secret string as a parameter. In order to be able to use JSON convert, we'll need to go to the Nugget Packages Manager and install the Newtonsoft JSON package. It will take a while and here we have it. Also, our method can now return a task from DB user model. That's everything what we needed inside the Secrets Manager service. Now let's use it when creating the DB context. I will navigate to the Inventory Manager context class and here do some updates. Inside the onConfiguring method, let's create an instance of the Secrets Manager service. On the instance, we can call the getSecretAsync method. Since this method is asynchronous and we cannot change the onConfiguring method type, we'll need to use the getAwaiterGetResult combination and assign it to the DB user variable. And now, inside the connection string, we can replace the static values with variables from the DB user objects that are from Secrets Manager. All right, that's everything what we needed. Let's now use both deployment scripts from the database and from the API projects and see if everything is working. Okay, I just went to our API Gateway console to check the place palette function. Let's put here some example body of the request and try. After a while, I get an error saying that the Lambda is not authorized to perform get secret value action. It is because we are missing a role that needs to be attached to the Lambda. Let's go to the API project into the serverless.json template file. Here, I will create new resource called inventory manager Lambda execution role. First of all, we need to paste this fragment to allow our Lambda use the STS service to assume the role. The Lambda will need to have the basic execution role and VPC access execution role. They already have it assigned inside the policies, but we can now have it in one place, inside our new role. Alright, and this role will have one or own policy, which I will call Lambda Policy Allo Secrets Manager. Here some boilerplate code about the version, but this policy will allow us to do the get secret value from the Secrets Manager service action. on any given resource. We now need to use this policy in our lambdas. 
we can replace the policy property in the getPalette function with this role. For this, we'll use the getAttribute CloudFormation method to get the RN of the role resource. The same can be copy pasted to the place palette function. Alright, that's it. Let's now deploy one more time the API and check everything. I just navigated to the place palette function to try one more time. And now, after a while, the response is 200. Let's go to the get palette and see if it's working also. Yes, it's working, that's great. Alright, we did a lot in this video and throughout this course. We have learned how to set up basic AWS services, how to run Lambda and use securely the RDS. I hope you have liked these videos and see you in the next series.